Hi, uh, my name is Marianne Grady Flores, and we are uh, here with Bill Frankel Street, and uh, we're sitting in Georgia, in Brunswick. Oh, Tell yes. us about uh, a word about yourself and your um, previous action as a plowshares activist. What was it like in court yesterday, and what was new for you, and what was old? Well, uh, Marianne, it's really um, interesting that we're here in Georgia and Brunswick because um, this is the first place where I did jail time, oh. right here in the jail here. It was, of course, that jail is gone. That was almost 30 years ago. Wow. But that wasn't the, um, the plowshares action. The plowshares action I was involved in was um, right before the first Gulf War what when the um, ANZUS plowshares, uh, there was a... Um, Two of us from the United States and a gentleman from uh, Australia, Kieran O'Reilly, and Moanico from New Zealand. And we were playing off the whole ANZUS uh, war pact that was made between Australia, New Zealand, and the United States. Um, uh, that they were, um, it was a, basically a war pact. And then it was dismantled by New Zealand when they chose um, anti nuclear legislation and the United States unilaterally pulled out of it. Where did your action happen? Action happened up at uh, Griffiths Air Force Base in uh, Rome, New York. Uh, and um, like I said, that happened in 1991. We were on trial in Syracuse. Um, and uh, uh, what struck me really about plowshares, the amazing thing about it was that it's a, it's an imminently religious action. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I thought from the very beginning, I felt I was the only one saying at the time, that it was a, a sacramental action, mm -hmm. uh, that it was, was a way of using um, uh, real tangible things like hammers and, and blood to really show the transforming power of God, which is what a sacrament is. You're using bread and wine and, and oils to really um, unveil what God's power is happening right then and there. Tell us, what faith do you come from? Well, I'm, uh, I'm from the Catholic faith, and uh, and I could see why plowshares would fit so well into that. And that's why it's really interesting. Um, when I was in court. Um, yes, when was that? Uh, that was, was that just yesterday? Yeah, yeah yesterday, yesterday, August 7th. And it was the, um, uh, what, what struck me mostly was uh, the, the amount of religious language that was um, being bantered about in court. Mm -hmm. um, uh, most other plowshares actions, it was like stripped down to what was only happened well, politically or, or what did you do it or did you not. And, mm -hmm. But um, with, the, um, with the new defense that these plowshares activists who are Catholics uh, are using, this RIFRA. Yes, the, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. I, I want to stop for one second and just say that this particular plowshares action that we're speaking of is the Kings Bay Plowshares 7 action in, uh, at the Trident Subbase. Correct, correct. And so to hear in the court that the judges uh, and the judge and the lawyers were even referring to this plowshares action as a sincerely held religious belief and a sacramental uh, disarmament action was absolutely unheard of. Yes. <laughs> in the past, there's been a whole history of plowshares actions in court where the judges have adopted an unlimited motion, eliminating the defense uh, of saying what they can say in court by the prosecution. And some of it is even in terms of vocabulary, not mentioning the Bible, the poor, nuclear weapons, or alleged crimes of the United States Air Force or Navy and all. Or even the... Um what the aftermath of any nuclear strike could look like. That's correct, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so this was new, and how was it for you to be in the courtroom yesterday for the pretrial motion, oral arguments? What was it like um, seeing the defendants that have been sitting in jail for se 16, 17 months now, since April 5th mm -hmm. of 2018? What was it like seeing Father Steve Kelly uh, Liz McAllister, who's now, as she says, I'm living my 80th year, and then Mark Colville, who's, se Steve is about 70 now, Mark is about 57. Mm -hmm. So what was that like? 
Yeah, Mark is kind of like the baby, one of the babies of the group. That's right, that's right, yeah. <laughs> but the, um, all, all the defendants are very good friends and a long-time friends, and uh, just about all of them I think I've been arrested with or in jail <laughs> with at one time or another. Yes. But, um, all well, for good causes. Yes, yes, uh, as, as Phil Berger used to say, uh, for the right reason, that's you go right. in jail. Mm-hmm. Uh, but seeing Liz particularly... Um, come in i i i said um, earlier today in our our mass that we had that uh, liz was this uh um quiet yet powerful presence in the court yes. and uh and the legacy of what jonah house means and all and but i uh uh yeah seeing all those people there i um uh, again <laughs> just you know frankly speaking our our group is such more much more interesting than the prosecution. <laughs> what they say and what they profess and how they spoke was just really um, uh, very inspiring. Yeah. Actually, it puts puts me to shame, actually, and uh, and just knowing the, the witness of, of being in there because, uh, you know, in, in some real way, what I really grasped from Phil and Phil Berrigan and from the, uh, the whole um, working of resistance, uh, actually, you know, I was a priest um, uh, years ago, and I was trying to struggle with this whole thing of being called to resistance and being in a very conservative situation. Um, and uh, I remember I had a very nice day as a parish priest, where I took communion in shut-ins, I had a nice mass, and etc. And I wrote, I was writing at that point back and forth with Phil, and I wrote to him about this. And he writes back a letter, and Phil was very short on letters, big on action, short on, on words. And Phil said, um, Dear Bill, I don't doubt that taking communion to shut-ins is a good and noble thing, but it's not the cross. The cross is nonviolent resistance to the imperial state. Oh my Sincerely, God. Phil. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, that hit me like a Zen koan. You know, that was like, yes, yes because picking up the cross is central yes. to to our Catholic faith. And, you know, there's a lot of cheap grace, as Bonhoeffer would say, uh, but costly grace is what it's about. Yeah. And uh, and so, um, yes, picking up the cross today is what exactly what these defendants are doing, particularly Liz and uh, Mark yeah. and Steve. And if you, you go through the Bible... You look at all places where Jesus is warning about the cross, and you just insert the word jail or prison, it's absolutely applicable. Because in this culture, as Phil used to say, we're, um, we're socialized to have a phobia of jail. That's right. And, but, I mean, of course, that's us white people who are saying that. For the black community and Hispanic community, um, it's a whole different ballgame. You know? And so that's almost more of a call for us white people to step up and to confront the powers uh, because our risking jail time is nowhere as much as it is for our brother African Americans or Latina. Yes. Bill, that is such a critical point and I think uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I know that the seven struggled really hard with um, trying to incorporate the understanding that they walk with a lot of white privilege mm-hmm. and their statement which is on our website the Kings Bay Plowshares website is so powerful um, I think we have it on video right on the front page mm-hmm. um, and if we don't we need to put it there <laughs> uh, but anyway and and we're hardly you know can applaud ourselves for this right. um, you know I, I am at a Catholic worker farm uh, near Charlottesville Whereas everybody Virginia. knows the Charlottesville, Virginia, where the debacle of the white supremacist, white Unite the Right rally was and all. And so we've been working very hard in that area um, uh, about against racism and white privilege and white supremacy. And it is, it is you know, you could say Trident and these nuclear weapons from, um, you know, all the way down to the small guns are all part of the whole white supremacy. I mean, it's, right. it is yeah. keeping that white supremacy intact. Thank you. Uh, if you'd like more information, please go to our website, which is kingsbayplowshares7.org.
Thank you. Thank you.